your story is so remarkable, just from beginning to now and how you've made it. But to see you come back from an injury, talk to me about telling that story and showing people your world. I think that it's important for the world to see all that goes into being a ballerina, that we're athletes, that we experience a lot of the same injuries and struggles that athletes do but we're also performers and artists and um, actresses on the stage. And I think it's really cool for them to see that, that, you know, it's not just me. So many dancers experience surgery and injuries that end their careers. And, and that was something that could have ended my career had I maybe danced a week longer. <laughs> um, but it's, it's just really cool to be able to represent ballet and to let people see behind the scenes and all that it takes to get up there and then for it to look effortless but it's not effortless behind the scenes <laughs> on so many levels you have taken a sport and an art because they're together and brought it to the mainstream through under armor through your best-selling books talk to me about becoming the the worldwide face of dance and and bringing it to another level right now um, it, again, it's surreal. Um, it's something that I've been passionate about and just because of the way that I was introduced to ballet, it wasn't something that was kind of shown to me because it wasn't a part of my community. And it's important for me to show the world that it doesn't matter what you look like. I think that it's an art form that everyone should be able to be a part of. Um, it completely changed my life. It made me into the woman that I am today. And it's not fair that you have to, you know, supposedly be a, a white woman and come from money to get this opportunity. Um, and so that's just a part of what I represent and stand for. Now you're directing this awesome project about what's become an iconic figure, Missy right. Copeland. Right. She's the world's foremost dance face right now. Absolutely. Talk to me about telling her story and her life. Well, it's funny, when I, I first uh, encountered her, it was just at a, actually not far from here, at a, at a restaurant in Tribeca, I went to a dinner party. I met her there. I'd never been to ballet, I knew nothing really about it, truly. I went to see her do the uh, Firebird at the Met. She was amazing. It was kind of an amazing experience. And then it turned out she was, she was dancing on a very injured uh, shin. And I said, wow, this is an amazing story. This iconic, this beautiful woman. She's gonna have to struggle to come back from this injury. So that became the backbone of the film, like following her from the height of the Met Firebird. Her picture was in front of the Met to like having to rebuild her entire career back up to where now she's doing Swan Lake. So uh, that journey has been amazing for me because it's, it's, uh, it's a world I had never expected to be in. But that's how documentary films are. You open up a door and you end up in a new place. What people don't realize, I mean, she was just named to the Time 100 this week. She is taking a sport and an art to a whole different level, a mainstream level. Yes. Talk to me about seeing that as you're working with the subject occur. Well, it's funny, when, when I first started working on the film, she was known within the ballet world. She had some celebrity, uh, but obviously she wasn't um, a star, you know, in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a pop way. While we were working on the show, she got a best-selling book. Uh, she had a children's book, she had the Under Armour commercial. So all the things kind of happened while we were shooting. This, cause, uh, there's like the arc of her career and the arc of her dancing. They kind of came together in this magical way. So uh, it was totally accidental. I mean, like, you know, I, I knew that she was a great star, but how many ballet, ballet figures get to be international as, you know, stars? It's, right. it's unbelievable. You're here supporting Missy Copeland. You're friends with Nelson George, a director. Sure. Talk to me about being here to support a ballerina's tale. Well, th first of all, Nelson is working with me on The Get Down, which is the Netflix series I'm on. But, you know, if you know anything about Nelson George, he has an incredible knack for being at the right place at the right time through cultural history. You know, he was there when Cool Herc was first playing in the yards. He was there at some of the great moments in, in terms of African-American music. And he's made this beautiful... Uh, documentary about Misty Copeland, who's, a, who's one of the great ballerinas, and her story is such a story of struggle and triumph. It's beautiful. You've had such an incredible movie career. Now moving to Netflix, I mean, we're seeing such incredible content sure. on television. Talk to me about what you're developing, what this is going to be about, and why the move to Netflix. Sure. Well, I think the attraction for almost everyone is that the creative freedom. I mean, the culture of Netflix is great and the way that they attract all sorts of artists is that they're really about creativity itself. They're just, you know, very... There's not so much hands-off, is that you can write and express what you want to do, and it attracts particularly 
uh, I think, a richness in writing. I mean, it's, the quality of the writing is fantastic. And we're working with a team of writers, Nelson's one of them, and it's on a piece set in the 70s. It's born in the South Bronx, but it moves throughout all of New York. Now, we, we, of course, a big part of it is hip hop, uh, but as well as that, we're down in the mud club, you know, with punk and salsa, and it's, um, it's New York through music in the 70s.